Hey YouTubers and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about something that we kind of touched upon a little bit in a video I did a couple months ago with World King Kanji, a couple months, couple weeks, it doesn't really matter, about basically the different fan interpretations of certain events or certain concepts and the series of Dragon Ball actually interpreting those events and making them kind of canon. And if you remember that video, we talked about the future Trunks timeline dealing with the Majin Buu saga or arc from Dragon Ball Z and kind of how that sort of played out in stuff like Dragon Ball Multiverse versus how it played out in Super and how fans had basically different interpretations of that versus the actual creators themselves. So I kind of wanted to take that concept and maybe build a little bit of a series on it you know, not too long, not anything any really, really elaborate, but just kind of bring in other YouTubers to kind of talk about various other things that Dragon Ball Super has seen seemingly, you know, whether they're stealing stuff or not, they're seemingly taking these concepts that fans have had or been wanting to go through for the last couple of years and making them canon. And today I'm actually joined by Frozen Particle, Nathan. Nathan, would you please say hi to everybody? Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video. Happy to be here, Mark. Oh no, obviously guys. And guys, please, if you have not ever seen Nathan's material, you've never seen this guy, I want to tell you, I always tell people when I'm on a video with him that I would be nothing. If you like my content or anything, I would be nothing without this guy. He was like one of my very, very first supporters. He believed in me. He believed in the content. He believed in he believed in the passion and everything. So, guys, please go check him out. He's he does some of the best editing in the entire community. Obviously, you know he's right up there with Black and Fist and uh, Expert Games. Back when Expert Games actually really edited his videos. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, guys, anyway, we're going to get right into this. So today we're going to be talking about basically Dragon Ball's Super, Dragon Ball Super's interpretation of the multiverse versus Dragon Ball Multiverse's interpretation of the multiverse and the differences, the similarities, and our interpretation of which one's better. Now, before I get Nathan's opinion on this, just to kind of briefly kind of describe the differences is basically in Dragon Ball Super, they... The 12 multiverses or 18, whatever whatever you want to believe, uh, that really kind of throws it out the window and we'll probably discuss that a little bit later. But there's 12 multiverses, 12 different universes actually that are mirror versions of each other and we haven't ever really gotten to see anything outside of basically Universe 6's fighters. We've seen Universe 7 and we got a brief glimpse on one planet in Universe 10. So we don't know the extent of it yet, but it still begs the question. With Dragon Ball Multiverse, the fan speculation being kind of a different interpretation of, you know, encompassing all the movies and trying to make sense of all these different timelines, when and where things happen. GT wasn't like GT was part of it as well, I think. I mean, I'm really I can't remember. It's been so long. But anyway, guys, Nathan, why don't you just start us off in terms of, you know, that particular mirror, mirror universes versus kind of, you know, different kind of little differences between multiple universes in the fan manga which one's your favorite and why um in speaking of terms of like which one's my favorite i think that super just because like some actually most of the ideas haven't been fully realized yet um like the stuff in universe 6 and even beyond you know there's 12 universes that really haven't been explored so just because of that i think Super has more room to sort of explore these new concepts, and I think that's just, you know, why it's my favorite. Um, but obviously, multi like, multiverse is really cool um, because, you know, it, it, like, it introduces the movie villains, which I really like. It's fan servicey, but, you know, I dig it. It's cool. Um, and, yeah, it does seem a tad too fan fiction-y and a tad too, like fan servicey but um you know so so does super in a way because um you know Kaba and you know vegeta sort of being that mental figure again is kind of fan servicey in and of itself but i think my personal favorite is super just because there's more content to giant like to sort of digest and well not now but there hopefully will be oh yeah i mean i feel like that's everyone's 
basic hope and dream that super kind of start exploring these other universes and all the different possibilities. Personally, you know, with the concept of the Omniverse Tool Tournament, we wanted to see kind of more universes. I would have been okay with actually going into another tournament immediately. It wouldn't have been my first choice, but over the stuff that we're getting now, not that it's bad, it's just, you know, I wanted something a little different. I want to actually explore the world of possibilities that they've introduced. And in that kind of way, I feel like it has been somewhat of a disappointment because we've known about this multiverse situation for a long time now. You know, like for, you know, ever since, if you want to even go as far back as to say Battle of Gods, the movie, we've known about it. There's been this promise Mm -hmm. of, multiple universes and multiple different strong fighters and stuff and we're yet we're still kind of laying waste in universe seven i'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing but when they brought in dragon ball multiverse which is basically for anyone who doesn't know it is essentially the omni king tournament i mean if if you want to explain it in very blunt terms it's this alien race comes down and kind of takes all the strongest fighters from every universe. I think there's like 19 or something of something or other. I'm not necessarily sure. And they they come down and it's a no holds bar tournament and you see a lot of different interpretations. And if Nathan was saying it's very, very fan service, you know, you got, you got Broly, Bojack, Cell having won, you know, the fight with Gohan, Boo having won the fight against Goku and Vegeta, uh, Vegito never defusing, uh, Frieza having won, Vegeta having won against Frieza, and being evil with evil Goku and everything. It, you know, Goku never being a hero and like Pan and not Pan, but Videl and Yamcha and Tien or something, and Krillin are kind of the strongest in the world, and they're like really strong people. It's really kind of a concept that's really cool. But yeah, it, it's fan servicey. And the thought is, I don't know whether my my question is, do you think that the idea that they're not taking it is like all these different mirror universes are different, and only six and seven are remotely related, and even then, it's so far as like only the only person that's distinctly like you know in a mirror version of themselves outside of the gods is frieza you know frieza and frost but there's no evil goku in that or good goku or good vegeta or any kind of thing like that do you think that that's out do you think that that openness is kind of limiting the possibilities of how much we will see going forward in dragon ball because there's so much stuff that would need to be introduced in super in order to make going to other universes makes sense. Do you understand that? Yeah, I mean, like, I think what Multiverse is trying to do is it's trying to sort of reintroduce the characters what we, like, we already know, and I think what's so interesting about the new universes um, is that, like, they're not introducing Goku and Vegeta again, which I like. They introduced first, but, you know, he was only one character, so... Who, who cares and um but yeah like what i like about that is they're introducing the same concepts but just flipping it on their head and they're introducing new characters with multiverse for the most part they're not introducing new characters they're just like sort of reintroducing them with their twit like with a little twist um like what if this happened you know um but with super i kind of like what they're doing better um with like just taking the same old concepts but flipping it on their head with new characters, you know. No, I I completely agree. The, uh, what I'm what I'm looking for is, do you think that that openness is beneficial to it, or is that going to be kind of limiting in terms of what they're going to show us? I know there's a lot of people saying, oh, there's so much concepts now, like it can just go on forever because there's an unlimited amount of possibilities, but at the same time. Do you think that they will take that opportunity to show us? Um, no, like, for the most part, no, I don't think so. I think they're more interested in, you know, the new timelines rather than the new universes now with the future trunk stuff. So I think some of it might get explained, but if it doesn't, then it'll be a huge detriment to the mirror universes as opposed to the multiverse concept. Mm-hmm. And, and that's... And that's 
the, that's the problem. I mean, obviously, we, we watched... I, I completely agree with you in terms of watching the Universe 6 fighters fight in their tournament. People like Hit or Kaba or Botamo or Magetta, those are really interesting characters, and we want to see more of them. But though, you know, after the fight, they were really just kind of swept under the rug. Now, we don't know if we're ever not going to see them again. It's way too early to kind of speculate on that. But at the same time, I kind of hoped, and you and I talked extensively about this in previous videos, that those introductions wouldn't be forgotten so easily, as if it was kind of building to something a little bit more. But I guess that doesn't seem to be the case. And the further away we get from that tournament, I feel like, and you know, in getting to this future Trunks arc, which like, as you said, is dealing way more with time displacement and multiple universes being split off or something like that. You know, as long as we keep going into this, like it feels like we're getting further and further away from the point. What was the point of a multiverse? Yeah, no, I completely understand. I and yeah, it, it's kind of disappointing, but um, you know, uh, you know, future trunks is cool and I think that's what the fans care about. I don't think like, I feel like, I feel like, like it like people are sort of sweeping these characters under the rug and you know toei themselves are sort of sweeping these uh mirror universe characters under the rug which is disheartening to say the least yeah oh definitely and and i feel like that's one of the big issues when it comes to what we've seen from the multiverse concept now this can all come back and i can eat all my words i say that a lot in terms of future speculation and honestly a lot of this is future speculation because Obviously, we still have the kind of idea that we're going to have an omniversal tournament, and we're probably going to see these characters again at some point. But I do think it's detrimental. I feel like when you bring in something like Dragon Ball Multiverse, where it's just kind of like a what if kind of what if this happened and how would that have affected everything? It's basically like a Quaman manga series, <laughs> honestly. Like that entire thing is just kind of what ifs. It's like you hit, you hit the nail on the head. But at the same time, when you bring in that concept to all these people, like to all the things, it's a little bit easier to jump off of. And it's instantly recognizable. It's instantly kind of, you know, it, it's, it's instantly okay when you go, okay, well, Goku is evil in this timeline. Well, Goku never existed in this timeline. Well, Goku, like, you don't have to go out of your way to explain a lot of things. Yeah. So you can really explore it vastly and have this huge nostalgic concept of well you remember this or like what if this happened and stuff and i'm not saying it's perfect i'm not saying that everyone out there should go read dragon ball multiverse but if you're interested if after hearing us talk about it after hearing a lot of other people talk about it then yeah definitely go give it a look because when you when you start reading it's yeah it's fan servicey but at the same time it's really nostalgic to sit around and think like, oh, okay, these characters are in this situation because this one particular thing happened. It's like watching a Quaman video. <laughs> and and that's that's what I think is cool. I feel like the fans have done it a good service, the concept at least, in something we haven't seen super do, and just completely, you know, they're sweeping it under the rug. It's an amazing concept. I thought it was going to be the crux of this entire series, and it just doesn't seem to be the case completely agree and also um you know having said that with the whole multiverse thing uh with the you know characters that you already know like if gohan like and cell had a rematch i feel like there would be more of an emotional impact rather than in the mirror universe um you know they have to build all of these characters up from scratch um you know some characters were done better than others and we don't really get that emotional impact, um, you know. Oh, yeah, I, I com you know, just jumping off of that, I completely agree. And it's something that you and I also talked about a lot during the events of the Universal 6 tournament arc. Because these characters, especially Hit himself, but a lot of these characters, is the fan base was sitting around going, how did these people earn their strength? I can understand, like that they're strong and that's fine but we've seen goku and vegeta go through so much trials and tribulations blood sweat and tears death and rebirth basically in order to get to where they are and then someone like hit comes and quote unquote improves 
in the matter of a fight. You know, he he Zenkai's like a mother mother. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so like and and like that that's okay. It it creates stakes. It creates like a really fun fight. But at the same time, you're like, what was the point? What was the point of any of this? I don't know these characters. I don't. It's not necessarily emotionally impactful. They make promises that they haven't kept up to yet. You know, Vegeta going to Planet Salad or Salad or uh, Salda, whatever it was called. And I think that is a big problem and what probably in what i've been trying to say and you kind of are hitting what i'm trying to kind of i'm beating around the bush towards is i don't think we're going to see these universes in any big way because this show doesn't like to focus very much away from goku or vegeta and we've already seen how they dealt with explaining interpreting and showcasing the new characters from dragon ball super you know seasons or uh, universe six you know and can you imagine having to do that with 10 other universes i don't think the show has the narrative capabilities in order to do that now if they were all evil versions of each other or if they were all you know slightly different versions of each other going forward it would be a little easier. We would have some kind of a stepping stone to start understanding who this person is and why they matter. Mm -hmm. And I think that in terms of like, it, like the ability to explore more concepts and to explore new and fresh ideas, I think super wins in that aspect, but to um, give an emotional impact to um, give more sort of fan servicey, more you know badass moments, I definitely think multiverse you know wins. So they're like, in a sense, like they have very similar ideas, but like um, the concepts around them are like completely different. Almost. Oh yeah, I, I completely agree. I feel like I, I feel like that's basically where I would leave it. I think that is the ultimate concept. Is yes, super has a wide open door to do anything at once and we can't wait to see where it takes it and we really hope that they take this idea and run with it to a point where we're satisfied but at the same time the way that multiverse handles itself the way the fans have interpreted this concept of dragon ball multiverse it's it's just so much like there's so much nostalgia there's so much really good moments that basically wouldn't matter if we didn't know the context involved and I actually think that's a big issue when you look at quality versus, you know, quality of a, one series versus another. I mean, they're both good and bad, obviously. Multiverse is a lot of just fan service and just, like, tons and tons of it. And Super is just trying to be its own thing. It's hard to tell, like, whether they care or not about what fans think. But I'm sure they do. And I think that that's what they're trying to give us. But at the same time, maybe maybe I just want something more than what they think or what other people want. I'm not sure. But anyway, guys, tell us in the comment section below what you guys think of Dragon Ball Multiverse. If you've never seen it, if you've never even heard of it, please go check it out. I'll probably put it in the description below along with Nathan's content and everything else. You should definitely go check him out. Nathan, do you have anything else that you want to say about this or any kind of closing statements? Um, not really. I think that um, comparing both of these series is... Like, it might seem easy on the surface, but when you really get down to the core themes and ideas that they're trying to sort of bring on screen or bring on a page it's quite difficult yeah i mean i i completely completely agree anyway guys you should definitely keep watching super if you want to go check out multiverse it's not terrible it's kind of cool uh anyway nathan's stuff will be in the description below please go check him out like i've said one of the best editors in the community he's incredibly knowledgeable about dragon ball he's you know, he does other type of stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh! and games every now and then. But, you know, mostly Dragon Ball. If you're a Dragon Ball guy, then please go sub to him. And also, like I said, I wouldn't be anything without him. I always like having him on my channel. I always like having discussions with him. And I really hope you've enjoyed this one. Nathan, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's been quite a pleasure, man. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll check you later. And, you know, have a nice day. Bye. See you.